Wednesday, October 26, the Commissioner of the Police, Antonio Lopez Figueroa, anticipated that the seizure of a shipment of 1,200 kilos of cocaine, south of Vieques Island, during the early hours of this Wednesday, could give way to an increase in criminal incidents during the next few days, especially in murders, by contract or stalking. The commissioner stressed that there is a drug panic in the street due to the recent blows to drug trafficking between state and federal agencies. The bales of cocaine were seized in the early hours of October 26, 2022, by United Forces Corps for Rapid Action against drug trafficking in Puerto Rico, south of Vieques Island. Saturday, October 29, in a 12-hour period, five people were killed, and five others were shot, police reported, bringing the total number of murders so far this year, to 469. The cases were reported separately in four towns, two of them in Carolina. One of the victims was a woman. The first case occurred at 6 p.m., Friday, on Guamani Street in the La Central Pueblo Indio neighborhood, in Canavanas. The authorities went to the place after they were notified of a person wounded by a bullet. When they arrived, they found the body of a man, identified as Neftali Jr. Marquez Benitez, 21 years old, and a resident of Canavanas. The Assistant Commissioner, Roberto Rivera Miranda, stated that Marquez Benitez, had a criminal record, including previous cases of murder. Three hours later, at about 9.14 p.m., units of the police force went to the premises of a shell garage, near a horse stable, on PR 874, in Carolina, after the command center of the area, reported a gunshot wound at the scene. At the scene, officers located a 2015 Honda Accord, inside of which was the bullet-ridden body of Carlos Alejandro Melos Santos, a 30-year-old resident of San Juan. The deceased was located in the passenger seat. Later, also in Carolina, the authorities were alerted, at about 3.26 a.m., about a man wounded by a bullet, in the marginal Baldurite, near the Fuente de Agua Viva Church. At the scene, officers found a Ford truck, inside of which, was the body of 31-year-old Edgar Paul Garcia Tejada. The deceased had multiple bullet wounds. Although these three murders occurred in the same area of Carolina, in a short space of time, the police commissioner pointed out that, at the moment, nothing has been identified that suggests that they are linked. On the other hand, the violent death of a woman was reported at around 1.56 a.m. this Saturday, at a gas station located on PR-165, in the El Abanico sector, in Dorado. According to a police news report, a group of people alleged that they were in the parking area of the gas station, when, from inside a wine-colored vehicle, they were shot multiple times. During the attack, a woman identified as Michelle Antoinette Cole Santiago, 40, a resident of Toa Baja, received multiple bullet wounds that caused her death. In addition, two men, aged 52 and 54, were left with gunshot wounds in their arms. Both men were transported to a hospital to be treated, the report states. The health condition of the injured men was described as stable. Lt. Col. Rivera Miranda indicated, in an interview, that the woman was not the target of the attack, but the wounded men. Meanwhile, a violent death occurred, at about 6.18 a.m., on Pitter Street, in the Miradero Los Delicias neighborhood, in Ibanito. A preliminary report of these events establishes that someone called the 911 emergency system, to alert of gunshots in a residence. When agents went to the scene, they found a man with a bullet wound, inside the house. The victim, a security guard, identified as Carlos Manuel Cruz Galone, 38, died minutes after the attack. The police arrested a suspect, identified as Edgardo Santiago Espada, 27, who was wounded by a bullet, when Cruz Colon allegedly returned fire, with his weapon, to repel the attack. October 27, a pregnant woman was shot, and a man killed, during a car chase and shootout, Thursday afternoon. The man killed, 
in a vehicle-to-vehicle shooting on the PR-52 Expressway, was Kendrick Morel Torres, who was on probation for a federal offense. The event occurred after one or several unknown persons, opened fire from another vehicle, towards the white Toyota Tacoma, that he was driving in the company of a pregnant woman. The female received gunshot wounds to her arms and legs, and is receiving medical care at a local hospital. The press office of the Auto Ray Command, issued written statements, that Morel Torres had a case of murder, and violations of the arms law, dating from 2014, for events that occurred in PA. The 29-year-old man was serving federal probation, at the time he was murdered. Captain Jose Torres, director of the Guayama Criminal Investigation Corps, stated that, given the victim's criminal history, there is a possibility, that the murder of Morel Torres is linked to drug trafficking. Friday, October 28, federal judge Francisco Bisaza postponed the trial for the murder of banker, Maurice Spagnoletti, to January 2023. The judge's order comes after defense lawyers argued that a few weeks before the trial began, on November 14, the prosecution presented material that he considered exculpatory, and that they needed to investigate it. On the day Maurice Spagnoletti was murdered, his black Lexus sedan was full of balloons. It was June 15, 2011, the day before his wife's birthday, and he was planning a celebration. Spamio Lady, 57, was an executive at Doral Bank, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The sun was setting on another muggy San Juan day, as Spamio Lady pulled out of the bank's office park downtown. His wife was waiting at home with their six-year-old daughter. The drive to his condo on Condado Beach took just 15 minutes. But a few minutes after Spanio Lady got onto the highway, he slowed for traffic, when another car pulled up alongside his, and someone fired at least nine shots, from a 40 caliber handgun. Spanio Lady had recently been hired to rescue the failing bank. His widow later asserted that her husband uncovered fraud, at Doral, in the form of other executives paying vendors, for services they didn't perform, and making unauthorized transfers of $30,000 a week, to someone. There was the bizarre disclosure of Doral's former CEO, Glenn Wakeman, practicing Santeria rituals, with other employees, or the idea that the payments might have been not fraud, but payments to Santerian priest. Santeria, which literally means cult of the saints, comes from Cuba, similar to voodoo in Haiti, it is, a syncretic religion that comes from the combination of African elements, animists, fetishists and Christian elements. It often involves animal sacrifices. One of the accused, Rolando Rivera Solis, was allegedly paid for janitorial services, over $20,000 per week, while actually performing Santeria rituals in the boardroom, after hours. Doral's Vice President for Property and Facilities, Annalise Figueroa, oversaw the new, more expensive janitorial contract. She says the contract included additional services, and was approved by Wakeman, who, Figueroa says, did practice Santeria. The FBI's murder investigation, begun shortly after the 2011 shooting, and it expanded to include fraud. In December 2014, the FBI raided Doral Bank, seizing computers from Wakeman, his secretary, and other executives. In February 2015, Rivera and Figueroa were arrested, and charged with fraud. The federal indictment said that Figueroa changed the cleaning company's contract so that it was getting $24,000 every week, instead of every month. According to prosecutors, the pair took $2.4 million. Charges were later dropped against Figueroa, with the option to refile by the prosecutor's office. Former Doral Bank, CEO, Glenn Wakeman, has called the stories disturbing, and untrue. He maintains that Figueroa was solely in charge of the janitorial contract. Tuesday, October 27, the former director of public works of the municipality of Catano, Pedro Moreiro Miranda, was sentenced, Thursday, to 30 months in federal prison. Moreiro Miranda, 54, worked under the administration of the former mayor of Catano, Felix Elcano Delgado, who pleaded guilty to corruption in November, of last year. According to the public ministry, 
the former official received at least $40,000, during the period of the conspiracy, while directing the Public Works Office, of the Municipality of Catanio. Monday, October 31st, two of seven defendants, charged for the $9 million fraud case, against the Municipality of Mayaguez, will face trials starting today, in the Otto Ray Federal Court. According to the case file, as of this morning, former judge, and former legal advisor, Arnaldo J. Arizari, and former executive director of Mayaguez Economic Development, Alejandro Riera Fernandez, were scheduled to face trial. Former American financial advisor, Joseph Kirkland, was also going to face trial, but his defense informed Judge Aida Delgado, on Friday, that he decided to plead guilty. In March 2021, a federal grand jury issued a 33-count criminal indictment, against the seven defendants, for participating in an alleged scheme, to defraud the municipality of Mayaguez, out of $9 million. Almost all of the $9 million, came from joint resolutions of the Legislative Assembly, for repairs and improvements, to the Mayaguez Trauma Center. According to the indictment, the defendants agreed to invest the money, providing Mayaguez with significant returns. Joseph Kirkland used the entire portfolio as collateral against future loans, and purchased $9 million in various United States Treasury securities. According to the prosecution, part of the money was moved to corporate, and personal bank accounts, of the defendants, who allegedly, used part of the money for expenses, such as the purchase of boats, jewelry, clothing, restaurants, payment of credit cards, mortgages, decoration and home improvements. Given the shortage of bananas and plantains, in Puerto Rico, due to the damage that Hurricane Fiona caused, to the plantations, the Department of Agriculture has managed to import the fresh product, from Central and South America. Bananas imported from Ecuador will arrive, so that there are cakes this Christmas. The Secretary of Agriculture negotiated to bring 30 weekly wagons, as well as fresh bananas from Costa Rica. Thanks for watching. Here's your weather for the week. Thanks for subscribing. Have an amazing week.